decided to take a ride on the skunk train out of Fort Bragg. While I was in purchasing tickets, the trains were being ready for passengers. The motor car was brought out first. With its smelly gasoline engine, this was how the railroad got its name, the skunk train. We were not going on this one. We were waiting for the train driven by the Baldwin No. 45 steam locomotive. It was quite interesting watching them connect the locomotive to the passenger cars. The locomotive is stored on another spur and has to be driven out onto the main line but then it's backed up to the cars, which are on another spur. That means tracks need to be switched back and forth. I was impressed with how intricate the maneuver is. After backing the locomotive most of the way to the cars, one of the engineers sets the coupler. Ever so carefully, he signals the locomotive's engineer to back up. And with barely a bump, the coupling is completed. The signal is given to move the entire train forward and onto the main line, where it again backs up to the passenger terminal. And then we are on our way. Mikado is the name generally assigned to the steam locomotives of the 282 wheel arrangement. This is the arrangement of the Baldwin number 45 steam locomotive. This design was developed by the Baldwin Locomotive Company in 1893, originally constructed for the Nihon Tetsudo Japanese Railways, a private railway at the time. In 1906, 17 private railways, including the Nihon Tetsudo, became part of the Imperial Japanese Government Railways, hence the name Mikado. However, after Pearl Harbor, some railroads most prominently the B&O and Union Pacific, renamed their locomotives of this wheel arrangement as MacArthur's. Early installations of locomotives of the 282 wheel arrangement, both narrow gauge and industrial such as logging, were ordered with a trailing axle to permit ease in bi-directional operation. The 282 became the principal freight locomotive of North America. By 1945, one-fifth of all locomotives operating in the U.S. were the Mikado style. The Baldwin No. 45 used here for the Western Railway's skunk train was built by the Baldwin Locomotive Company in 1924. These locomotives had great traction and had the ability to handle trains of 3,000 to 5,000 tons at good track speeds. The Mikado, or 282, was a beautifully balanced design with the lead axle and the two front driving axles being equalized by the two rear driving axles and the trailing axle. This design was perfect for both passenger and non-passenger service. We were on the round trip run from Fort Bragg through a redwood forest to North Spur at the 22 mile post on the rail line. This took us along the Noyo River crossing back and forth on most of the 30 bridges and trestles and through one of the tunnels. 
As we traveled along the line, our conductor and guide gave us a bit of the history of the railroad and the land through which it traveled. He was explaining how the landowners in this area had to grow crops in order to keep the land. One of those crops was apples. Also along the way, as the train wound its way through the redwoods along the Neuer River, we were serenaded by one of the two entertainers that routinely accompany the passengers to and from North Spur. Well, I say no, ladies and gentlemen. Nay, brothers and sisters, nay. That blues is not sad music. That blues is happy music. It's meant to soothe your soul. It's meant to lighten your mood. But lucky it's going to lighten your wallets. But let's not dwell on that crass commercial aspect of our relationship. Let me do an old Hank Williams tune for you. I'm going to dedicate this to all the beautiful women on the train today, and I don't have to point you out. You all know who you are. Not you, sir. I'm not talking about you. Thank you. There's a song called The Hate Is Looking. Now, if you happen to know the words, you feel like singing along, please feel free to do so. However, if you don't know the words to this song, please do not sing along. Thank you. You can hum or whistle if you like. That works for me. It goes like this. It goes something like this. No, it goes exactly like this. Hey, 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 hey. 
When we got to North Spur, we had to move off the main line as the diesel train from Willits had to come through. They were headed to one of the picnic grounds that we had already passed. That's where they were having lunch. Once the Willits train moved on past us, our train moved back onto the main line and we were able to disembark and have lunch here at North Spur. We took some time to look around and enjoy the area. While there wasn't a whole lot to see, it was nice to just walk around and relax. We got a closer look at the engine as the engineers did some maintenance. These old locomotives are always in need of tender loving care, which the folks who coax them along the rails are willing to give. Baldwin number 45, Nikado, got a good drink from the large water tank. With that done, it was time to reboard the train. And again, we were treated to some entertainment by our traveling troubadour. A song about a train called the City of New Orleans. It goes like this.
Well, after that, we spent a leisurely afternoon on the journey back to Fort Bragg, back across the many bridges and trestles over the Noyo River. The route passed several campgrounds as it meandered through the 123-acre forest of old redwood and Douglas fir trees. The locomotive on the return trip seemed to glide over the rails. We were going downhill, back to Fort Bragg, and with the exception of the constant hiss of steam, there was little or no sound from the engine. We settled down and even had our photo taken with the conductor before the excursion came to an end back at the Skunk Train Depot.